Welcome everyone. So let's just dive right into this. This is five ways to start your book. These are just some tips. There's a lot of different ways to start your book. These are just some of the common uses or common ways to start your book, but it's really up to you. However you feel like, however you feel is the, the most appealing to you will probably be most appealing to the reader. And the beautiful thing about writing, it's all about creativity. So however you see fit, it's just that these are the, the, five, the five common forms that it tends to fall into. So it just happens, it's just human nature. So um, the five ways are scene setting, a memorable statement, starting with a question, start with a flashback, and um, begin with a description. For those of you who haven't heard any of my videos on self-publishing before, my name is April Thomas. I'm an author. Um, I love, 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 love writing and and um, all the stuff that comes with self-publishing. I like to share my knowledge with others who are looking to um, write and publish a book. And on my channel, I'm going to be sharing tips on how to do that, along with other things that I talk about that I'm passionate about. So I hope that you enjoy. I hope that you find this material useful. And if you're looking for more, if you really, really want to go into depth with this, or you're looking for coaching, I am starting a coach coaching course. And I'm also, I also will be starting one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you're interested, you just let me know. Um, you could probably leave a comment or um, you can, you can contact me through my website, aprilathomas.com. Okay, so the first style that we're going to talk about is the memorable. So um, in this one, you're going to write something that will kind of be like a hook. You're going to start the book on kind of like a hook, which is, which is good. And um, you, it's whatever, whatever it is that you find, again, whatever hooks you, high chances are it's going to hook the reader. Um, you could always test it out on people around you, your family and your friends, and see how they feel about it. So this is from my book, Demented. I used all of my books as examples of um, different opening styles because I like to play around with it a lot. So I had I had a lot of material to work with. Um, so this is Demented. It says, she is a temptress, long dark hair. Of course, it had been a weave, but it still did the job. So this is a story of, it's a, one of my short book stories. And um, it talks about, she's not even the main character of the book. You know, none of, none of that even matters. She's not in the, the main character of the book. And, um, but uh, it starts to scene out. So I wanted to give the reader something like the feeling of, hmm, what's, what's going on here? You know, so you want to always have that intrigue. So always keep that in mind. Try to find something that would be interesting. That's a hook. Um, there's so many... You, you probably want to start looking at, as probably a good idea to go to a library, just spend a day at a library and just look at how different authors open their book. Go from classic literature to modern and just look at how they started their book. It's, it's, uh, it'll be fascinating and it'll give you a deeper insight. Okay, so I'm not going to read all of this, but I'll just read the first paragraph here. And it says, Simone Dash has the body of a supermodel and the sexual appetite of an addict. She is too much for him, but he did enjoy her company. So it, then it goes on to talk about one of the main characters, Caleb Ross. And then it talked about the scene. Like, I, I, that's where I set the scene for where they were. And that's when the, the reader realizes that they're walking through a hotel lobby in Las Vegas. Um or you start to learn that near the, the middle of the page uh, when I'm just talking about Caleb. So 
in that first, and this is the first page of Demented. So you get that opening hook where it's like, okay, it just sounds like, you know, you know, just sexy girl walking down the, walking, walking, you know, walking, whatever, you know, somebody, it's somebody that as a female, you can kind of relate to, you know, all dressed up, you got your hair done, you're looking good, you know, you're feeling good. And, um, just like you know you're good looking right um something that's relatable you know um that that will start to help kind of draw the reader in and then it goes off into the guy what he looks like and stuff like that and and where they are so in that first that first those first three paragraphs that first page of the book i hopefully my goal was to capture the reader's attention to make them want to flip the page and read more. Um, You always think about your reader is going to, if your book is in a bookstore or on Amazon, they read that first page, is that first page going to hook them? Now there's, there's been cases where I've heard people have read up until the fourth book of a, of a series to actually get hooked on a series, which I think is ridiculous. I think that's, that's horrible, personally, in my point. It, it should never have taken that long for you to get into it. But with all that being said, everybody's different. Um, I don't know why it would take you that long. <laughs> I mean, God bless them. They really they really tried to get into this, <laughs> into that book. If it, they had to read four books into the series. They really tried. But um, that's not the goal as an author, as a writer. You want to get them hooked from the first page. You want to get them hooked from that, that opening line, really. And you want it to be something where they keep one. Okay, I'm gonna read a little more. I'm read a little more until they're like, okay, no, I, I, they now they the the value has risen in them and they want to buy the book. That's that's your goal, you know, because you you want your story. You don't you're not just writing stories just for the heck of it. You're writing stories because you want your stories to be read, right? So you gotta write it in a way that is very visually appealing, and it flows well. And, and all this fun stuff. So the opening of your book is so very, very, very important. Beginning with a description. This is uh, the second method. So if you think of, you know, this, I think to me, this is very common. This is how most people would start their books. It's um, it's kind of like a classic in a way. Um, if you think of, uh, let me see. You know, like in the opening of a movie, how it starts out, you start out by seeing the scene that's going on before you, you know, start start by, you know, hearing any of the char- characters or, or so on. So this is basically just giving the reader a description. It just kind of, kind of draws them in, kind of, kind of, it <laughs> draws them in to the story and um, it begins painting this picture around them. As they as they emerge themselves into this story, as you as you lead them into the story, it's actually a really good technique. This is from my book Broken, and um, it starts out describing the scene. So I'm going to read this to you: The waves crashed against the ocean's shore, while the moon cascaded along the beach, creating a breathtaking vision. Exhausted. May stood by her husband with their sleeping son in their arms, in her arms. It was after midnight and the 72 hours of traveling had left them all but drained. So in this, I've, I've hopefully have created the, 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 like, like a 3D image or not even image. I really, I've wanted to be like a movie in their mind. So I want it to be, I want them to feel they're standing there, either they're they're May holding the feeling the weight of the baby in their arms, or uh, standing next to their husband, or they're like um, my writing style. I would say was kind of like a fly on the wall, like or, or the ghost in the room. <laughs> um, you're there seeing this couple standing on the beach, you know, and, and it's it's evening and the uh they're they're holding this baby and they're just they're exhausted 
and they're drained and they're just sitting on the ocean floor. I would love for people to even feel the the crash of the waves hitting around their feet, around their ankles, you know? So that's what I want to do. So with that opening scene, that immediately puts you into the story. Now you are invested into this story. What happens next? That's what you want. Okay, so this is actually part, probably more of a memorable uh, opening than the one that I told you about, number one. But this one is starting the book with a question. And you want your question to be powerful. You want your question to be thought provoking. Um, again, it's all to hook the reader in and, you know, have them really read your book. And, and, and it also shows that mm, this is a book that is, that may have some deep insight. It's, you know, like for me, I, I write fiction books, but there's so much more than just fiction. It's not superficial. I don't think I really write any superficial books. Um, even the ones that may appear to be superficial on the outside are very deep. If you actually take it, if you actually get it and read it, you'll see that they're it's not a superficial book. So um, in this one, why do they hate us? And you got to think, and here I have an image, but their reader is going to read this first line and it's like, okay, unless they have read the previous book, this is a book that I'm working on right now. So it's not even out yet. It's called Rosewood. Um, the book that's before this is called Forbidden. That book is out. That's the book that I have most recently finished. and um, that is out and available. So if they read the first book and then this this is gonna, this is really going to pique their interest because this is a question that kept coming up in the first book, but was never answered. It was always, never really answered, you know? So, um, but it was asked three times in the last book by, I, I wanna say three different characters. And I, I did that on purpose. So these are like little Easter eggs, little nuggets, you know, it's kind of fun. Um, that's a great way to open your book with a question. If you find a, if you can have a question that will really reflect of the message, be reflective of the message in the book and goes with the theme and, you know, just overall it flows with the book. So why do they hate us for people who are following, you know, this, this series they're going to, they're going to know, they're going to relate to this. This is going to pique their interest. Okay, so this is the first page of Rosewood that I'm working on. And I edited this part so that it wouldn't be too crazy <laughs> uh, for this video. But um, it starts out with a question. So I'm just going to read part of the first page. And it says, why do they hate us? Why do they hate us? Amali laid her head on her father's lap as he brushed his fingers over her long wavy hair. Rosewood had been raided again, destroying the farmer's market they had worked hard to build. Chief Tate looked down at his daughter, searching his heart for the right words to comfort her. Dakota was busy with the other warriors cleaning up the wreckage at Rosewood. He had sent her back home to the cave, putting her safety above all else at the moment. Tate took a deep breath as he looked up towards a small opening in the cave ceiling. Your father was the offspring of a powerful war leader for our people. He was a black Seminole and we had high expectations for him. They hated him too. To them, he was not even seen as human. A rodent was more valuable to them. They hated what they hate, what they envy. So it's, you know, it's, this is the opening of the book. If you're following the book and the storyline and what's going on, you're going to instantly be like, okay, got this, <laughs> you know, like, that's what you, that's what you want as an author. You want, you know, the people who are interested in this, 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 these, these types of stories um, are going to be excited when they see this, they're going to be excited. Like, oh, okay, yes yes, you know, let's get into this. And that's what you want. So this is, uh, this style again is uh, opening with a question. 
start with the scene. So we're at, at style number four. And this is taken from my book, Spirit, and this is how it opens. Um, the silence broke with the sound of a plastic device hitting a faux Mabel. Faux Mabel. Let me read that again. <laughs> The silence broke with the sound of a plastic device hitting a faux marble countertop. She picked it up again. Damn it. She gazed at the object of her demise. So in this scene, so that's going to be the first thing the reader reads. I I would like to think the reader is going to want to know what, what, what the hell is going on here. Like what is going on here? You know, you're basically, it's like you're thrown right into the story and I overall, that's what you want to do. You want to you want to get them into the story as fast as possible. So, um, sometimes the settings may seem a little slow. Sometimes they may seem fast. But there's different ways to get the reader into drawn into the story quickly, and get them to commit to it to want to read the whole book. So, this is one way. Um, that you can do that it starts out with this woman is obviously going through something what is she going through okay flashbacks i love flashbacks this is the this is the last tip for how to start your book and um i love flashbacks because it kind of gives more detail more background story into the characters and the situations that they're in and which I find to be a lot of fun. And I actually use flashbacks a lot. In the beginning of my writing journey, uh, when I would use flashbacks, I think that I did not always apply them correctly. And therefore the reader got kind of confused. Like what the heck just happened? Like <laughs> what's, what's going on? So you have to be very careful with how you use them, but flashbacks can be very, very effective. So the flashback we're going to be talking about today is from my book, Feral. So Feral is a book that I had to really, really toil over, really work over, and and, and uh, really get the, the full story out. One thing I learned about doing revisions and revamps is the more you focus on the story, you know, revising it, the more the story comes out. And I truly believe that the story was already always there. It's just me as a writer wasn't getting all of it. I, I wasn't understanding all of it to write it all down, to translate it correctly and to get all those little bits and details out and the significance of them. So one thing I like about taking your time, this is why I said like, if, you know, I have a whole different process now and now I'm trying to go through and revamp my books with the same method that I have. Uh, for storytelling, and I love how the books are coming out, and that's something that's important. If you got to love what you do, if you don't love what you're doing, if you don't love how your book is coming out, then you need to revamp it, and it's always good to to take a break in between. So, like, you take a rest for up to two weeks that so you don't even look at that book. You have nothing to do with that book. You do your best to forget that book even exists. After two weeks, you pick that book up again and you go over it again. And you're just, you're, you're, you're being your own worst enemy at this point. You want to flip to that critical side of you when you're doing your work. And that's how your work becomes so much better. Your writing becomes so much better. Your, your, your craft of storytelling just increases tremendously. So in this scene, if the reader reads the prologue, um, they're going to, there's another scene in the in that that wasn't there before in the original. It's in there now, but in the prologue, it talks about um, the this, this young girl um, uh, Azora, and um, just kind of like when she was going through her therapy session. So it's a one. It, it's a it's a it's a really interesting scene between her and her caregiver and her caregiver. Uh, why the caregiver had brought her home early. But I'm going to read a little bit of the opening. This is the first, the beginning of the first chapter. It says, the doorbell rings. She's here. Amelia, ha Amelia Hansen jumps to her feet and darts out of her husband's office. She races down the corridor towards the front door. Be careful, dear. Remember what the doctor said. Albert Hansen races behind his, over, over, races behind his sensitive wife. 
It is August 1993. Their youngest daughter is returning home after being lost for five years. So that is like that first chapter, the prologue and the first chapter is is set way back then, you know, 1993. And it talks about her case. It talks about how she became, how she became lost, what happened, what they don't know what happened because, you know, she's just nonverbal and what's going on with her. So then chapter two begins, which is actually the, the originally the beginning of this book was where chapter two is now. It's story started off in chapter two and chapter two starts out with her wedding day. So um, when in the whole revision and one of the revision processes, I realized maybe I need to go back a little bit and tell more about the background story. The background stories gives the characters depth. It gives it, it makes the characters more relatable and it gives the reader more understanding why the characters do and move a certain way. It's important because if they can't relate, they can't follow, they don't understand the way that this character thinks, um, it makes it kind of frustrating and it could actually take them out of the book. You're trying to keep them in, you're trying to, you know, it, just enjoy this break, this mental break from reality and enjoy a good book. That's that's our, that's what we do. We're writers, that's what we do. So, um, this is one, another one of my favorite books. Uh, you're going to hear me say that a lot because why butter books are just not your favorite. And okay, I say that, but I do have a book of mine that I've I've written. It's, it's, it's not my favorite. <laughs> it's not my favorite. Um, I don't even know what to do about it because I have revised it and I'm still like, eh. But if it, it, it's a book based on Egyptian mythology and the thing with Egyptian mythology is it's very, very strange. So this book nailed it. If you put it, look at it that way, this book nailed it. But um, yeah, so I hope that you enjoy this. These are the five different ways that you can take your, you can start your book. I'm going to be working on different videos with different tip, writing tips. Again, if you're interested in uh, getting one-on-one -on -one coaching, or taking uh, get taking my my coaching course, I'm more than happy to give you more information on that. I will be providing information on that in the next video, as once everything is completely set up. So take care, happy writing, and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>